Hey there, it's DDSLP with Spirit Speech Consulting. To tell you a little bit about me, I am a speech language pathologist who helps parents understand the harmful effects of excessive digital programming in the development of language in young children. And I assist them in creating an environment that fosters developmental growth and success that their children will benefit for years to come. Thank you so much for jumping in and watching. This will be a two-part video discussing the four building blocks of language development. Make sure to watch until the end, no skipping out early, because I'll give you a quick tip. The four building blocks of language development are attention, problem solving, communication, and socialization. Building blocks refers to the key components that build a foundation for developmental growth. The stronger the building blocks, the stronger the foundation, and the more developed your child will be. On this video, I will discuss the first two, which are attention and problem solving. But before I dig into that, I wanna briefly give you some background on brain development. I am a strong believer in educating my parents. And I always say, if you know better, you do better. I got that from my mom. I guess I'm turning into my mom. I can tell you what to do, and I can even tell you how to do it. But if you don't have the why, it's hard to understand the steps and the tips that I would give you. Knowing the why helps make a connection and with a greater connection, you'll have better success at execution. You know the old proverb, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So stay with me on the science part of this because this is me teaching you how to fish. All right, let's jump on in. The first five years of life are very critical for cognitive and language development. This is the time children form their neural pathways and connections. These connections are shaped by experiences. Think of the connections as highways that are built to take people from one point to another. The brain uses those experiences to build out those highways, which will transport information to other parts of the brain. I've said before, if you are what you eat, then your brain is what it experiences. I want you to look at brain development the same way you would look at nutrition for your child. The more appropriate the experience, the better the connection the brain will have. At birth, the brain is about 25% the size of an adult. It doubles in the first year and it grows to 80% by age four. By age five, it's 90% the size of an adult brain. Wow, now you can see why building developmental skills from birth to five is so, so critical. There's a lot of stuff going on in that little head. As the child develops, the brain is wiring itself based on the input it receives. The input forms the connections the brain makes. The connections that are used more often become stronger, while the others are, that are not used are eventually eliminated. Ever heard of, if you don't use it, you'll lose it? Well, that really is true. The brain is very efficient. It doesn't have time to waste energy on something that you're not going to use. So build strong. Parents with older children, I'm talking to you too. Because the brain is so efficient, you can retrain it to do whatever you want it to do. You just have to be intentional and consistent with the experience you feed it. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that later. All right. That's it. That's enough of the science stuff. Now let's get down to the nuts and bolts. Attention. It's the very, very basic prerequisite for learning. If a child is not able to, uh, to sustain attention, they'll miss out on concepts taught in the classroom. They'll miss nonverbal cues from their teachers and peers and become distracted with their own thoughts swirling around in their head. Now let's think about the media that your child consumes. Are the children's shows they're watching on YouTube or Netflix overstimulating with highly colorized images, fast sequences, and unrealistic characters? Are they gaming every day? Are they seeing violent images? These are things to think about because a lot of what is available to children these days in the form of digital programming and gaming is overstimulating and dangerous to a, development, a developing brain that takes what it experiences as the circuitry for what it will become. 
Overstimulating shows conditions the child to sustain attention only if they're highly entertained. We all know that that's not the real world. They're being robbed of the opportunity to self-regulate their boredom, need for change, and how to problem solve. So see, that little science stuff about the brain is coming in handy. Speaking of problem solving, that brings me to my next component in the four building blocks of language development. Problem solving is the process of finding solutions to obstacles and barriers. Children need strong problem solving skills to aid in resolving conflict and handling challenges. Yes, this is a skill that is developed early in life. Babies solve their problems with hunger through crying. A two-year-old may solve the problem of not getting what they want by throwing a fit. Now, side note here, you don't want to encourage your child throwing a fit by giving him or her what they want. So we'll talk about reinforcing negative behavior a little bit later. So whether good or bad, children are developing the understanding of cause and effect, which is, which is really what problem solving is. This skill is most beautifully facilitated through play. When a child plays with a toy, builds something with blocks, completes a puzzle, or makes something out of Play-Doh, they must use critical thinking skills to find the solution. It also builds confidence because they saw the problem and they found an answer on their own or with the help of a parent. That's providing the input the brain needs to build that skill. Remember the brain is built on experiences? The early experiences of solving problems builds a foundation for academic success later on. What the consumption of some digital programming does, it robs the child of the opportunity to solve problems on their own. They don't have to do anything for all of that stimulation that they're, that they're receiving by watching a show on YouTube. They can just sit there, take it all in, they don't have to interact with anyone, and in some cases, not even encouraged to speak. Then, when a problem arises, they resort to their infantile ways of solving problems, such as crying or throwing a tantrum. The brain hasn't been wired well with problem solving, so it really can't perform that action. You'll probably see that that's the reason why a lot of, the, a lot of children have fits and throw tantrums when they're not getting what, they're want or what they want or when the, cho the show has been turned off and they're not able to, to watch it. So just be mindful of that. Let me be clear. I'm not saying that all children's shows are bad. The ones that are interactive are better than the ones that encourage the child to zone out like a zombie because they're overstimulated. The ones that ask the child questions and pause for a response and encourages the child to get up and move, those shows are even better. Still, even the best show will work the, the very best with a parent who is accompanying the child for interaction, turn-taking, and a shared experience. If you are watching along with your child, you know what's being consumed and you can discuss later to build on what was learned. Now, children under 18 months should not have any screen time at all. Sorry, think of it this way. If your child isn't talking yet, they aren't ready to watch television. The brain is built in stages and it doesn't interpret unrealistic images under the age of 18 months. Think of it like building the frame of a house without first building the foundation. It's not gonna work out so well. A child under 18 months needs to build on realistic experiences first, then gradually introduce media. All right, for my parents with older children, if you found that you've done some of the things that I've advised not to do, don't worry, all is not lost. The brain can be retrained. It will take consistent, deliberate action, but you can rewire the brain. Just think about when you wanted to change a bad habit. The same rules apply. So let's say you wanted to start a diet. You probably bought the foods that you would need to be successful. Then you got rid of all the problem foods such as sweets and chips and junk food, whatever else that would work against your diet. And you probably worked out on a consistent basis. Working out, I have to admit, that's my problem. <laughs> but the part is, is that 
You took deliberate action and you made a conscious effort to be consistent and repetitive with the new habit. The same can be done with your child. You can reduce their screen time. That would be phones, tablets, game systems, television, laptops. And you can substitute that time with something else, such as playing, such as making something or giving them a responsibility that they can do around the home, like coming up with a menu for dinner for the week or coming up with a family activity to do on a Friday night. Whatever it is, be consistent because the brain works on constant repetition. All right. Okay, guys, that is it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Join me next week as I will discuss the other two building blocks in language development, which is communication and socialization. If you want to know more about how to create a healthy environment for your child's speech and language development, you can join my Facebook group called Pandemic Mama, or you can follow me on Instagram at Spirit Speech Consulting, and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Spirit Speech Consulting. All right, guys, thank you so much for this time, and we will see you next week. Bye. Hey, it's DDSLP with your quick tip. One very easy way to strengthen language skills and improve or and expand communication in your child is through reading. I know you're saying big, big deal, but listen, reading really does stimulate the part of the brain that helps the child understand meaning. It builds vocabulary skills, develops and strengthens literacy skills, and helps with socialization. No matter the age, reading never gets old or ever reaches a plateau in development. Even as adults, reading is still very beneficial. But when you read to your child, I'm not talking about just reading a book, turning the page. I want you to really be mindful of doing something a little different. And what this is, is called interactive reading. I like to call it interactive reading. This is where you ask questions about the story that you're reading. Okay, so let's take for example, the story may read, Nicholas knew Jason was sad because he lost his new red ball. So Nicholas went to Jason's house to see if he wanted to come outside and play ball with him. To incorporate interactive reading, you would ask questions like, who lost their ball? Why was Jason sad? What did Jason lose? Why did Nicholas go over Jason's house? This encourages the child to participate with the story and builds comprehension. Try reading a little bit each night with your child, incorporating interactive reading. It can be for up to 10 minutes, but it will make a world of difference in their development. The interactive reading really helps them to build language skills in, in knowing how to respond, turn taking, answering questions, comprehension, and, and beyond. So it really, really does go a long way and it's something very, very small and very, very simple that you can do right now, okay? Well, thank you so much for your time and we will see you next time. Bye.